If you click this video, you know exactly what this is. And I've got a few things to say about it. Well, of course, this is the 2023 Cervelo S5, but you guys, there are so many reviews on this bike already. So what makes this review any different? Well, the difference is the first thing I'm gonna do is as Key and Peel would say, T-O-T-S, throw out the script. Well, you guys, every review out there about this bike seems to say pretty much the same thing. This bike won the Tour de France two years in a row. It's the fastest aero bike on the planet, blah, 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 blah. And when putting together this review, it would be very easy for me just to repeat the same thing. But instead, what I wanna do, throw away that script, and I wanna give you a real world opinion from a regular person on how this bike actually performs and handles. So let's get into it. All right, guys, well, now with that ridiculous intro aside, we can get back to business as usual. So basically, I want to cover the features of this bike. I want to talk about how it performs and handles, and then I want to show you how much it weighs. Be sure to stay tuned for that, because at the end, we're going to weigh this painted version with the unpainted version, and we're going to see how much of a difference in weight the paint job adds to it. So you don't want to miss that part. Okay, so the features. So as you guys know, this is the S5. It looks fairly similar to the previous version of the S5 back from 2019. And I think, honestly, this frame just looks absolutely awesome. I mean, literally this thing looks like it was designed by SEAL Team 6. If I was president of some country, I would literally just add a ton of these to my military. Be like, yeah, we have 100 fighter jets, we have 50 tanks and three S5s. <laughs> It is offered both in this sapphire ice, which is a really cool color. It kind of glitters and, and shines in the sunlight and is a little bit more muted in the shade. I think it's a really cool color. The five black color was really cool too. It's a little bit more understated. They're both awesome looking bikes and you cannot go wrong either way. But there are a few key differences between this model and the 2019 version. And one of those main differences is actually going to be in the head tube and the steer tube. So the head tube and the steer tube are both going to be a bit longer. The steer tube in particular is going to be a bit bulbous as well. The combination of this steer tube and head tube, Cervelo tells us, makes the bike quicker in real world scenarios and also makes it more stable because it's going to capture and deflect the wind better than the previous version or other aero bikes. So that's one of the key differences between this version and the previous version. One of the other main differences then is going to be the section underneath the seat tube. So this is going to be a little bit deeper as well. And Cervelo claims that this area is actually one of the most important areas for wind flow because this is where wind passes over the frame the fastest. So the fact that this is a little bit deeper now is going to make the bike a little bit quicker as it passes through the air. And it's also going to help increase the stability. The rear section of the bike, meaning the chain stay and the seat stays are going to be a little bit deeper as well. And this whole area is just a bit more cleaned up from the previous version. And one of the reasons why is Cervelo has eliminated the ability for mechanical shifting. So that means this bike is going to be in electronic shifting only. The bottom bracket down here is pretty enormous. So that's going to increase the stiffness. And we are using ceramic speed bearings, which is awesome. If you take the chain off the bike and you just spin the bottom bracket, it just kind of spins forever. <laughs> now, one of the things with this bike, which actually this is true with a lot of aero bikes, you see the seat stay meets the frame a little bit below the top tube. So what that's going to do is it's going to increase the comfort of the bike because this is allowing the seat tube to flex a little bit more more left and right because it's not being held in place at the same spot by the top tube in the seat stay. So that's going to increase your comfort a little bit. Okay, so the top of the bike, let's look at the top of the bike now. The stem is going to be the signature Cervelo V-shaped stem. It's a pretty cool stem. One thing that Cervelo claims is that as the air passes through the middle of the stem, that's going to make the bike a little faster versus if the air was hitting the stem and then having to go around it. Instead, it goes through it. So Cervelo claims that makes the bike a little bit faster as the bike traverses through the air. Also, this stem is going to be a lot less complex than the previous version of this bike. This stem is held onto the rest of the bike with just three 
identical screws that you find up here at the top. All you gotta do is take these caps off and you'll see three screws. They're all the same exact screw. You just take those out and you can remove the stem. This is a lot easier than the previous version of this bike, which you had to kind of Frankenstein your way through a bunch of cabling to get the stem off. This is gonna be a lot better. Also with the stem, so you see here that we have a bunch of spacers. Now, you guys are always making fun of me for how many spacers I have on my bikes, but you gotta recognize a lot of these bikes are not my bikes, so I can't really adjust them for the camera. Although to be real, I still would put a ton of spacers on here because this is a really aggressive bike. And so I guess you could still make fun of me for that. But in any case, you can fit up to 30 millimeters of spacers underneath the stem. So what you're seeing here is actually the most you can fit. This is 30 millimeters of spacers right there. So that's as high as those bars can go. And I think most people would want to use those because this is a very aggressive bike, but we'll get more into the fit and performance later. The handlebar, a flat handlebar. I really love flat handlebars on bikes. They're a lot more comfortable in my opinion, and they're more aero. So it's just the best of both worlds. This handlebar is going to be held onto the stem with two screws on each side of the stem mount. Again, pretty easy to take off if you need to take it off. What's also cool with this setup is Cervelo is giving you the option to adjust these screws such that you can change the angle of the handlebar five degrees up or five degrees down. So giving you a little bit of adjustability in the geometry and fit of the bike to make it the perfect comfort level for you, which on aero bikes like this, the more adjustability, the more comfort we have, the better. So that's pretty cool there. You do also get a computer mount at the top of the bike, which is pretty cool. Cervelo is now starting to do that with pretty much all their bikes. The one thing I will say though, although it is nice to get it because it is one less thing you have to buy, I don't really like these mounts that Cervelo ships because there's a pivot point kind of in the middle of them, which you can see and the idea is that you could, I guess, use it to attach a second device, like a light or something. But I tend to not like this because what ends up happening in the real world is that this thing just kind of flops around like crazy and you'll be going along the road and your computer's just flopping around like a dead fish or something. And so the solution obviously is you can tighten it with the screw there, but those screws strip really, really easily. So I kind of wish Cervelo would just give us a single piece computer mount, but in any case, it's free, so can't really complain. Okay, the seat post, this is gonna be Cervelo SP20 seat post. It's the same seat post that we pretty much got in the previous versions of this bike and also some previous versions of Cervelo's S3, which is now discontinued. It's the same seat post. However, this time Cervelo is shipping it with a negative 15 degree offset rather than a negative 25 degree offset. So the idea is your push a little bit more forward and therefore you can produce more power down to the pedals. We're seeing bike fitters more and more, even in the Pro Peloton, push their riders a bit more forward. I've always preferred that. For me, the negative 25 degree seat post that these bikes used to ship with was just absurdly stretched. I never understood why they would do that. Um, so now that we have a negative 15 degree, that's better. I'd probably still prefer a zero degree, which you can buy aftermarket, but that's gonna be, of course, rider preference. All right, guys, now let's talk about the wheels and tires because this is where it starts to get pretty interesting. So this bike is shipping with the Reserve 5263 wheels. So it's a 52 millimeter deepish wheel in the front and a 63 in the back. So it is deeper in the back than it is the front. Now, a couple things about these wheels. So first of all, they're made by a sister company of Cervelo called Reserve, and these wheels were made specifically for this bike in particular. The width of these wheels is also pretty insane. These are some of the widest wheels I've ever used. So the internal rim width on the front is going to be 25 millimeter. The internal rim width on the back is going to be 24 millimeter. So that means 28 mil is gonna be pretty much the lowest width tire you can put on here, which is just bonkers because it wasn't that long ago where if you had an aero race bike, you pretty much had to go 25 or even 23 mil. And maybe if you were lucky, you could fit 28. But nowadays, 28 is basically standard. Now there is clearance on this bike for up to 34 millimeters. But the thing about putting 34 mil tires on this bike is don't. Just don't do that. <laughs> That's so crazy. I have no idea why anybody would put 34 unless you're racing this on Perry roubaix But if you're racing this on Perry roubaix then you should probably get your head checked. But the other reason why I say stick with 28 is because these wheels are optimized specifically for 28 mil tires. So in wheel design, the idea is for the most aerodynamic efficiency, you want to have the outer rim width be just a hair wider than the tire width when the tire is inflated to its max. So the outer rim width on this bike for the front 
front wheel is going to be 35 millimeter and the outer rim width on the back is going to be a 34 millimeter. So that pretty much matches the 28 mil tires because when you put 28 mil tires on here and blow it up, it ends up being about 30, 31 ish millimeters wide. So that means that the rim is actually a bit wider. And so you're getting the most aerodynamic efficiency because with a lot of other bikes and wheels, the tire actually blows up to be a little bit wider than the outer rim width of the wheel itself, which in crosswinds can kind of cause some shenanigans because it basically captures some wind in that little crease between the tire and the rim. And it's one of the main things that ends up causing some of the instability of aero bikes and crosswinds. But the interaction between tire and rim with this setup is optimized for 28 mil tires. And the seal that the rim creates with the tire is going to basically reduce wind drag as much as possible, which makes the wheels a lot more stable in the crosswinds. The wheels are just really interesting to me. And if you get this bike, I would say just definitely get these wheels because they were optimized for this bike in particular. And I think they're really, really, really good. Guys, now the part we've been waiting for, let's talk about performance because this is the part that I want to be super honest with you guys about because there, as I said, so many reviews, both in written and in video form that pretty much say the same thing. Like, oh my God, this bike is freaking amazing. And it's like the fastest thing in the world, but is it really the right bike for you and me? Well, let's talk about it. So I've been riding this bike for about four months now and there's a few things that have definitely stood out to me over that time. So first of all, I will say that with the wide tires, the 28 mil tires, the bike definitely smooths out road vibrations pretty well. So if you're taking this on roads that tend to be a little bit crappy, the tires and wheels and this, the compliance in the frame definitely do make it easier on the back, the neck and the wrist because it does smooth out those road shenanigans, which is great because my personal aero bike, which is a Cervelo S3, has super skinny tires and when I ride that thing on even the smallest pothole, I just get in a lot of pain. And this bike definitely smooths it out. In fact, it almost kind of feels like you're riding on a cloud when you ride this thing because it just feels like it decouples you from the road. It's really a great ride feel as far as like dampening road vibrations go. So that's one thing I noticed. Okay, so the second thing that I noticed, which was particularly interesting to me, is just how stable this bike is. Even though the wheelbase is fairly short compared to something like a Caledonia or a Trek Domani, the bike is remarkably stable, which was really, really cool. Because usually with aero bikes, what ends up happening is especially downhill on a section with lots of crosswinds I end up just getting blown around like crazy and there's been times where I've even pretty much like nearly blown off my bike entirely this bike I didn't get that in fact this is probably one of the most stable bikes I've ever ridden which is really awesome the interface between the tire and the rim I think is really what's doing it I think these these wheels are excellent and very stable wheels and so I think that's really helping out the bike tremendously so this bike gets an A plus in my book for stability especially for someone like me who downhill is probably the most difficult part of biking because it really is where bike handling becomes critical and this bike will really help you compensate for any lack of bike handling abilities in terms of stability and confidence it's just a really good predictable and confident ride and i really like it now don't get me wrong i'm not saying like a tornado blows through town and it's like everyone quick run to your cervello <laughs> still go to the basement <laughs> but i'm just saying if there was going to be any bike i would choose to ride through a total tsunami <laughs> this would probably be it all right guys so the third thing that i've noticed about this bike i've noticed that when i start to go uphill say around like four percent or higher i really feel like this bike just it's difficult to work with i mean it it, it really struggles you definitely notice the weight penalty and I think in addition to that the geometrical penalty this is a bike designed for like aero racing in the aero position and this aero position is not the position you want to be in when climbing I feel like this is definitely not an all-rounder bike I've been riding nowadays mostly in the Santa Monica mountains and I think this is just not the right bike for that this bike is really more suited for flat riding so if you're in the states Kansas Florida if you're riding out there I think this is where this bike would really shine I don't know about other countries how flat other countries are i don't even know if there are other countries out there we americans have heard that there are but most of us think that's just a myth 
All right, guys, so the last thing that really stood out to me when riding this bike, and pay attention because this is a big one, this is probably the most aggressive bike I have ever ridden. It really puts you in an aggressive position and it gets really hard to hold after a while. For me, anything more than 25, 30 miles on this bike starts to just get really painful and really uncomfortable. So if you do see me in a 25 mile criterium race and I'm just sprinting to the finish line, it's probably not because I'm trying to win the race. It's probably because I just want the ride to be over because this thing is just really painful after a while. I did 40 miles on this yesterday and I feel like my neck still hurts from it. I mean, it really puts you in an aggressive position. So to be extra clear, this is not a, hey, let's take a wife and kids and go to the coffee shop kind of bike. This is definitely a, hey, I'm gonna get on here and freaking crush the guys next to me and ruin their life kind of bike because this is a strictly for racing. It is not for leisurely rides. That is my honest opinion. And if you do take this bike with your wife and kids or your husband and kids or whatever it is, and you're going to the coffee shop on your local trails, I guarantee you, you're gonna end up just blasting right past them and you won't even notice because you're gonna be just so <laughs> exhilarated, but they're gonna notice and they're gonna really hate you and it's gonna ruin your relationship. So you'll have to factor in the divorce into the overall cost of this bike. <laughs> Just to put it in perspective, you guys, I did a max effort on this bike the other day and I ended up going so hard that I broke the pedal. <laughs> this is a Look Titanium Ceramic pedal. Cost like 400 bucks, which by the way, I don't recommend Look pedals because I've had problems with this pedal since day one. And I emailed Look about it and they kind of mocked me. They were like, well, I don't know. Our pedals are using the Tour de France. So I don't know why you're having any problems with it. And they just weren't very helpful. And now it ended up cracking. <laughs> which this could be fatal in the wrong circumstances. Then again, they are using the Tour de France. So whatever, your <laughs> mileage may vary. Point is, you guys, this is going to ruin relationships if you take this bike out with friends and family. This is meant for racing. All right, guys, well then, should you buy this bike? Well, guys, my honest opinion, and this is what I mean when I say I'm throwing out the script, I really just do not think this is a bike for everybody. I know in most reviews, both like written and in video form that you find on this bike, everyone's telling you how fast it is, how amazing it is. But in reality, you guys, it may be fast, but if it is faster, it's only faster by a little bit. You really just have to ask yourself, what kind of riding are you doing? This bike is meant for racing at the top level. This is not meant for your local group ride. This is not meant for your family friendly ride. This is not meant for your, I wanna enjoy the scenery ride. This is for racing. This is a racing bike. So if you're not doing racing, a bike like this may not only just be overkill, but it may be completely uncomfortable and just total misfit for your kind of riding. For me personally, I ride mostly in large groups. I like to do some solo efforts every now and then, some solo time trials, but this bike is an all arounder. I think it's just not that. I think for most people, if you do want kind of a fast and racy bike that can also be used in a casual setting if necessary, go for the Caledonia. Something like a Caledonia will still be a bit racy, but offer a lot of features meant for comfort and a more relaxed geometry. So again, what kind of riding are you doing? Are you constantly riding in zone five all the time, just crushing it everywhere you go? <laughs> like, probably not. Most of us are not doing that. Unless you're Jonas Vingengard and you're and your paycheck depends on it, then definitely ride zone five everywhere you go. But if you're not Jonas Vingengard or Tare Pagaccia or something like that, then just, I'd say, let's chill out a little bit. But I, I did do three rides for you guys, all a max effort. So let's pull up the rides on the computer and let's see how fast this bike actually is in comparison. And then we'll come right back. All right, you guys. So let's take a look here. So the first bike I rode was the Canyon Ultimate CFSL8. I did basically 19.2 miles per hour average speed. I tried to keep an average wattage of around 215. So I exceeded it a little bit at 219. Uh, there are 318 feet of a and I got 19.2 miles per hour average speed. Okay, so then let's compare that to a more aero bike. So this is a Cervelo S3. This is an aero racing bike. And with this one, I got 19.5 miles per hour average speed and uh, 215 watts. So that's actually a little bit less wattage than the Canyon, but I got a hair faster speed. So that kind of makes sense. It's pretty much the same wattage, but a little bit faster speed. This is an aero bike. It's, it's more uh, aero, so I guess that makes sense. Uh, a little bit higher ascension, but just don't mind this. It's the exact same route, so I don't know why I miscalculated there. Okay, now the Cervelo S5. Drum roll, please. And okay, so with the S5, we got 20 miles per hour average speed. Now, the thing is, I did end up putting in a little more power here. I didn't mean to do that much. Uh, I ended up going about nine watts over my target average power and I got 20 miles per hour average speed, so nine watts average power extra. Would that really have given me 
0.5 miles per hour more than the Cervelo S3. Uh, you know, I don't know. Basically, if I were to scale this down to 215 watts, this would probably be a little bit less. So basically, you know, I think we can say the S5 is probably a little bit faster, but by and large, you guys, I don't think this is like, you know, the fastest thing on the planet. I think if you find a good deal on a bike you like that looks cool, just go for that. You'll probably in all reality end up riding the same. So there you have it guys. Is this bike really any faster? Maybe a little bit, it's hard to say. Bottom line, I think it's overkill for most of us and i really just don't recommend it for the vast majority of people and so i know i'm probably pissing off half the bike industry by saying that but it's my honest to goodness thoughts but of course that's just my experience if you've ridden this bike let me know what you think before we go as promised let's weigh this bike with the five black version let's see how much weight the paint job adds and then we'll come right back all right guys the sapphire ice version of the cervelo s5 2023 in a size 56 weighing in at 17.99 pounds. That is completely stock from the factory with no modifications made whatsoever. All right, guys, this is the five black version of the 2023 Cervelo S5, also in a size 56, same exact bike. And this one is weighing in at 17.95 pounds. So it's about 0 0.05 pounds of a difference. Now, granted, it's not totally apples to apples, the bar tape on this bike is a little bit heavier than the other bar tape and the saddle doesn't quite weigh the same as the other saddle. I'll put the weight differences of this saddle on screen so you guys can do the math there. The bar tape, I'm not sure how much that weighs versus the other bar tape, so uh, keep that in mind. But this bar tape is actually a little bit heavier. I do know that than the other one. So bar tape being equal, saddle being equal, this would probably be a little bit less actually. Um, so it would probably weigh closer to like 17 point, I don't know, 92 or 91. Not a huge difference, but you can see that the paint job actually does add some weight to the bike. So I found that kind of interesting. All right, guys, that is my review of the 2023 Cervelo S5. Awesome bike, really cool looking. Ultimately, I feel like just gonna be overkill for most people. If you've ridden this bike and have different thoughts, please let me know. I'm really curious what you guys think. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.